guys and welcome back this is tutorial number 10 part 4 in this tutorial I'll show you how to do the top level which will allow you to connect your counter to your board but before we start I would like to make a small note I forgot that in a clock divider you guys will need to put uh, the clock 1 hertz to 1 the reason you have to do that is because in your counter module you wait for a pause edge clock which means that the clock has to be high in order for a reset to, to set the counter to zero otherwise if you guys have this as zero the this line here then your clock will not your counter will not reset so make sure you do that change and I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys do the change and then we'll start on the code for the top module guys okay, so this is the code for the top module I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out so you guys can see it better first thing you always do is set your inputs and outputs and in this case since our module will be a structural module which means that different modules will be connected within it to create its function you will need your output to be declared as a wire instead of a register as you can see here and then another output that I added was the anode because I only want to use one anode on my board I will have to turn off all the other anodes because by default they're turned on so I'm gonna have to turn them off and just turn on one and these here are wires that I use within the the module to connect different modules together so let's go ahead and start with the clock divider so what I always do I always copy the first line on each module so if you go to each file copy the first line that says module and then a the name of the module and because that will help you when you try to figure out the name of the module which you don't wouldn't have to go back and forth to figure it out you would just look at it here and see what you need so clock in is the clock coming in from my FPGA reset and then clock out is my wire which this wire connects to the counter and then the counter itself will then get reset up down which is a switch for counting up or counting down and then this output output which will be connected to the seventh segment display now uh, one thing I would like to mention is that when you make an instance of a module you start by naming the module by the name it has already and then you give it a name and then you go ahead and put the variables that are in the top module within the sub module and then right here on the bottom where it says assign anode I turned off three of my first anodes and I left the fourth one on so a one will turn them off and a zero will turn it on so let's go ahead and synthesize and a really nice tool I would like to show you guys is this one here under synthesize if you expand it there's a tool called view RTL, RTL schematic if you double click on it it will pop out this window that says all these but if you press ok to the second option you'll be able to see your schematic so if you double click on this you can see that everything that you just did is in a drawing so this is a very useful tool because you're able to see what you connected and how you connected it and that, that way if you have errors you'll be able to go back and change them without having to go through every single line of the code so another thing I like to do is to input the file that I got from Digiland so if you go to Digiland you can get the UCF file which is the universal file that has all the inputs and outputs from your board and basically all you have to do is to change the name of it so that way you don't have to write everything 
it's just basically you change the name and it gives you the location already and you have to uncomment it and it's very useful because it has many many different pins in here and you just basically use what you want so I use my my clock as my my clock on my board which is B8 the location is B8 and then I use the display and the anodes I use one of the switches and a button so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my board alright guys so here's my program and it's Lo it's loaded into my board and it's running right now it's currently counting downwards now I'm gonna press on the reset button once it's and now I'm gonna show you guys that it does reset see so this is my reset button and then this switch here the first one here makes it count down or up so I'm gonna count up now so that's it guys I hope this helps you out with your project and I'll see you guys soon. I'm going to start another tutorial on a debouncer in case any of you guys need it. So I'll do that and good luck with your project. Bye.